In this demonstration, we're going to keep the conversation going about DAX, but we're going to be talking about logical or information functions. And so this is basically just additional uh, filter criteria where we're adding the sort of logic to um, you know, sort of filter by multiple criteria in AND situations, or we're, maybe we're looking for criteria that is equal to either option A or option B. And then we're also gonna talk a little bit about sort of if statements, similar to things that you might write in SQL, but in the context of DAX. And along the way, we might also touch on true and false, but this is just kind of incidental to us using some of these other functions. So I went ahead and created a new measure table over here for our logical information measures. Since you've now seen me do this twice, I thought maybe for the third video, it's safe to just cut that part out entirely. And we're going to be using profit, a profit measure from our sales table instead of revenue for no reason other than just, I got tired of talking about revenue. Let's talk about profit. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to just add revenue as a card up here so that we can sort of, you know, know at all times what we're dealing with. I'm just going to go ahead and drag this over here and get rid of the background and just keep profit sort of on the page. So we're talking about $4 million in profit, and we're gonna break this down a bunch of different ways. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm gonna add a bar chart up here. And instead of talking about products, we're gonna talk about our stores this time. So let's add store location, and let's add our profit measure. And you can see we've got, you know, about a little over $2 million in profit at downtown locations and all the other locations are considerably lower, but we've got about $4 million in total profit. The next thing that we're going to do is what if we just want to look at profit for two of these locations, but not the other ones. So let's go ahead and add a new measure and we're going to call this profit downtown and residential. And it's going to look something like calculate profit, of course, which is basically going to give us exactly the same output that we already have. But I'm just going to go ahead and copy this visual and I'm going to add our new profit measure, which you can see is exactly the same at the moment. But this time within our profit measure, we're going to add filter criteria for store our stores table. And we're going to be looking for situations that meet one or another criteria. So we're going to use the or statement, specifying that we want Power BI to look for values that meet either option A or option B. Option A is going to be where store location equals downtown. And option B, or logical two, is going to be situations where store location equals residential. And we're just going to go ahead and close this out. And now you'll see that our second bar chart is only showing downtown and residential because of our, our or criteria here. Now you might already be asking yourself, okay, well, what happens if I replace or with and? And let's go ahead and check that out. And you'll see that when I save this, now there's nothing showing up here. And the reason for that is that our data set doesn't have any scenarios or any values where store location can e be equal to both at the same time. So we have no values where store location is equal to both and uh, is equal to both downtown and residential simultaneously. It's always an either or kind of situation, which is why we're going to use or. I wanted you to know also that, you know, if you're like me and uh, you're trying to save as much time and energy as possible with your DAX, you don't even necessarily have to use OR. I'm going to cheat a little bit by telling you about a function that I don't think technically counts as a DAX function, but is still super helpful, and that is IN. So instead of using OR, let's just type in where store location is IN. And this works just like uh, in does in SQL, if you've ever used it before. And it, it, it basically is shorthand for includes. So we're looking for situation where store location includes, and you might be thinking we're gonna use parentheses, but we're not actually. We're going to use brackets, and we're going to look for situations where store location includes either downtown or residential. 
And then we're just going to go ahead and close that off. You can see it's slightly faster to write this than to write or to get to the same outcome. Now we're pulling, and you can see nothing changed here, but we're just pulling values where store location includes downtown and or residential. And the brackets are just kind of unique to using uh, the in, in function within this calculate statement. So we've got that. Now let's go ahead and uh, find a good situation to use the AND function now that we've demonstrated how OR works. And for this new measure, we're going to find a count of products where uh, price is greater than $20. And we're going to use the same product count measure that we created in the first video. So let's go ahead and reference our product count measure. And we're going to go ahead and add that down here. So at the moment, you know, we've got 35 products in our table. You know, we created this measure in the very first video that we did. If we go over here and pay a visit to our products table, you can see there are 35 rows refer referencing our 35 products. I'm going to go ahead and just drop my new product count measure in here. And you can see it's still 35 because we haven't actually added any criteria yet. Um, but let's go ahead and add a filter here uh, using our calculate statement. So let's calculate product counts, but this time we're going to look for products where the price is greater than 20. And you can see this time there are only six products and we can go back to the products table and we can count these up. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now let's go ahead and change this a little bit so that we can use and as well. Maybe we decide that instead of looking for products that are greater than 20, we want prices that are between 10 and 25. So we're going to now look for situations where, and I'm going to use and, product price is greater than or equal to 10 and product price is less than or equal to 25. And now you can see that we've got 22 values here, which, you know, is, I feel reasonably confident. I'm not actually going to physically count all of these, but looks about right to me at a spot check. So we've got 22 values there utilizing and I want to walk you through one more and filter example that could trip you up. So let's go ahead and create a new measure and we're going to look for profit where store location equals downtown and product category equals toys. And so we're going to run into a problem here if we try to do any shortcuts. So let's go ahead and use calculate and we're going to call our profit measure. And we're going to add a filter function here. And already we can sort of anticipate what the dilemma is because downtown is part of our store location in our stores table and product category is in our product table. But notice that in this filter function, we can, uh, we can only call one table. And it's no problem. We're just not actually going to use the and function here. We're just going to apply two filters. So first, let's apply a filter to our stores table and call store location equals downtown. And let's go ahead and grab a, another card here. And let's go ahead and add that measure. And you can see there is our downtown profit, which I can reference up here to make sure that it looks right. And now instead of using and, we're just going to call filter again, but this time we're going to call our products table instead of stores. And we're going to look for all products where the product category equals toys. And now you can see we've got $630,000 in toys sold to downtown locations. Now we're going to get into our if and switch functions uh, just to show you how these kinds of this kind of logic works 
in Power BI. And I'm also going to show you uh, how to sort of use selected value as well to do some really cool conditional formatting on some of these visuals. So let's go ahead and just move these two cards out of the way. And we're going to apply the logic up here to our store location bar chart here. So let's start with just a very basic formatting situation. And I'm going to create a measure here, and I'm going to call this uh, bar chart color. And for this demonstration, we are actually going to use an if statement. So let's go ahead and say if the selected value of our store location equals downtown, then I want to use this blue hexadecimal color code. Next, if the selected value being evaluated by store location equals commercial, I want to use this and it should be kind of a purplish color. It is important to make sure that you always have the hashtag so that Power BI recognizes it as a color code. And if my store location equals residential, I want to use this code, 14967C. And finally, if selected value equals airport, I want to use this color. And then I'm just going to close everything here. And of course, all I'm doing is I'm basically saying if the selected value being evaluated on store location ever equals downtown, then I want to be able to use this color. And of course, I'm using all four values that are possible in my store location field. And I'm calling each of them specifically, and I'm identifying which color I want them to use. And so I've got downtown, commercial, residential, and airport. And I'm just going to go ahead and save this measure. And you'll see that, of course, nothing automatically changes with the bar chart. I'm not actually doing anything with the bar chart color measure that I created. But I am going to just add a table real quickly, and I'm going to add store location, and I'm going to grab my bar chart color measure just so I can make sure that everything appears to be loading correctly. And it looks like my colors are there. That's very, very promising. So now I'm gonna head back up here to my bar chart, and I'm going to select my bars, and this conditional formatting property is what I wanna look for. Now I'm going to click on that, and of course, I have the option to add my own gradient based on the, uh, you know, any measure of my liking. But if I go up here to Format Style and click on Field Value, I can now choose that bar chart color measure that I just created that contains the specific colors that I want evaluated in the context of this bar chart. And notice that when I now click this, I'm getting the four different bars for these different values because these colors are now being read into this visual based on the value of store location for every given bar chart. So that's one example. Let's go ahead and do another uh, sort of conditional coloring example, but this time we're going to use a different uh, version of the if function, which is called switch. Very, very similar. Switch and if, you know, really are kind of interchangeable with doing the same sorts of things. There's just a little bit of nuance uh, to each of them. I used if for a long time, and then I switched uh, literally to switch, and they're very similar. So let's just go ahead and call this bar chart color two. And this time we're going to be using switch. And switch works like this. We're going to say if the following criteria are true, then use this value. And in, in this first criteria that we're going to define is if profit is greater than 750 
thousand dollars, which should be just commercial in downtown if I'm looking at this correctly. Yep. Then I want you to return this green color, one four nine six seven C. And if the profit is not above that number, then I want you to return my sort of uh, magenta color here. And let's go ahead and drop this uh, in and see if it's working correctly. Yep, so we've got downtown is above 750,000, so it should be our green. And it is, and so is commercial and residential and airport are the others. So now we've got conditional formatting based on like a numeric threshold or the output of profit instead of using our store locations. So now let's go back to our bars and instead of using bar chart color, we're going to use bar chart color too. And you can see I've now got two green bars and two purple bars because instead of using whatever the given value is in store location to determine the colors, we're now using the value of the measure itself, profit to determine the color of each bar. So there we there we go, two examples of if and switch. Pretty easy to use, uh, you know, really comp complex to master in the scheme of things, but that at least gets you started uh, with how to, you know, write your own DAX to uh, implement some conditional logic. Just to sort of cap things off and actually use false as well as true, we can also use something like this to literally just flip those colors around. So instead of using true, we're just using the the exact opposite criteria. We're looking to switch based on the following being false. And if profit is not greater than $750,000, then use green, else use magenta. But, you know, of course, most of the time I use true. It's a little bit easier to uh, wrap my head around and then kind of using the double negative that you end up with false. So. There we go, and we're back. So that is uh, an example of some of the most common logical and information functions that you're going to use. In the next video, I'm going to show you how to build calculated columns, which means that we're going to be revisiting uh, the if and switch functions just a little bit so that I can show you how to add like a new grouping or column uh, to a table within your data set.